validation. The over-reliance on our need for validation, for permission, for seeking approval. This is a topic that's really important to me because I know my journey with this um, has, has, it's never ending, right? But I, I came from um, a childhood and I came from a young adult experience which I was constantly seeking validation and worthiness all the way through even my corporate career um, until I finally got a handle on, oh my God, I don't need approval from anybody except myself. <laughs> and that really, that kind of mentality uh, has changed my life. Um, and I work with a lot of clients that have concerns about, um, like for example, even the feedback uh, that they get and really internalizing feedback because again, that's like another mechanism for feeling va uh, validated. Um, and it can be really dangerous. It basically can keep us really small. When we, seek, when we seek validation in a way that is unhealthy, that we are completely driven by, that's what's unhealthy. Uh, there's a uh, human nature, you know, there's a, there's a part of us as humans that yes, like, yes, we like to have affirmation that we're like on our path or we like to have validation. Uh, that we're doing a good job and we like to receive feedback that tells us so but there is a there's a fine line between um taking that in and enjoying it and not hooking on to it um because and and sometimes it can be hard to tell oh am i like am i relying on this or or is this unhealthy like the way that i'm going about um, wanting to feel valued. Um, and I will say it really starts with, it starts with knowing your own value and knowing your own worth. It starts with a healthy understanding that you can give yourself the support and the validation that you need. Nobody else, uh, no external source, um, has to do that. It, it can be nice. That's kind of like you know, the cherry on top, but that we have the ability to support ourselves and confirm for ourselves um, that we are freaking awesome. You know, I think this topic is especially important for women um, because of how we're raised and this whole like asking for permission mentality. Look, I'd rather get my hand slapped um, after the fact and, and do something that I felt was right, the right thing to do uh, or in everybody's best interest versus ask for permission to do that. Um, but that kind of shifting that kind of mentality um, can take some like inner work, doing the work. For a lot of my career, I would go into each new job and with each new um, even manager that I had with this mentality of, I need to prove myself. I need to prove that I deserve this job. I need to prove that like to this manager that like I'm worthy of this, you know, my next promotion or I'm worthy of like being on this team that, that I deserve to be here. Well, that is absolutely the worst way of, of being in roles and in positions um, because the motivation comes from this negative place really and I know some people can say oh well that's what drives me that's like I have this F you mentality and that's what drives me to do my best no honey it does not you are fooled into thinking that's that's helping you be your best but how could helping you be your best ever come from a place of of beating yourself down of of even feeling like you have to prove something. Um, and that, that's a concept that I think it's hard for a lot of people to grasp. Well, oh, it's, you know, me um, demanding more for myself, you know, is, is how I get the best. Well, if you're doing it in a way that is, um, that comes from a negative place, it's not, it's not. Because we, we do our best when we feel empowered, when we feel supported. Um, and not when we're trying to prove something. 
And one of the jobs uh, I took, I remember, I went into that job with a very different mentality. Not from a mentality of, I need to get in here and prove myself, but from a mentality of, I'm happy to be here, I'm excited to be here, and I'm gonna kick ass. And that's all there is to it. Um, that I have nothing to prove, I don't even need to prove it to myself because I already know um, that I'm awesome. And so when you see me just doing my work, I know that you'll see it and there's nothing that I need to you know, show. And I having that mentality and that, you know, for the first time was liberating. It was liberating because I was not working crazy hours in order to like prove my work ethic. I know I have a good work ethic. And so I just did what I did. Um, I wasn't like going over the top um, with my effort because I didn't need to, because I was good at what I did, you know? so. Uh, this this topic of validation, external uh, feedback as drivers, um, I think what it does is it keeps us playing small and we give our power away. We give our power away when we're looking to others to fuel us and feed us. And when we can start changing this is when we fuel ourselves and I'm not saying that this is this is easy, um, especially after years and years of being really hooked on on praise, um, on positive feedback. Um, it can be really hard because it forces us to really say, "I value myself just as I am, and I don't need somebody to tell me." the good, the bad, or the ugly, um, because I can see it in myself. And that way, when you do get information, when you do get feedback, you can make a choice about how you receive that. Um, I take a lot of uh, great kind of counsel on this topic from Tara Moore in her book, Playing Big. Like, I, I love that book um, because she talks a lot about, she, there's a whole chapter on unhooking from praise and criticism. And the way that she describes um, how you can look at feedback is to look at it like feedback gives me more information about the person giving me the feedback than it tells me about myself. I'm just going to let that sink in for a minute. Feedback tells me more about the person giving it than it tells me about myself. And once you can start to look at that as what feedback is, the more you realize that it makes so much sense to do a whole lot of filtering about what you're gonna take in um, and never internalize because again, it's telling you about the other person. It's telling you about their preferences, their likes, their dislikes. It's telling you about what does it look like to have a successful or easy relationship with that other person. And you can make a choice. You say, oh, I see this person doesn't like um, when I, uh, I'm assertive. So you can, I can say to myself, well, if this person matters to me, maybe I'll choose to be less assertive with that person or to say, well, I'm an assertive person. That's who I am. And I'm not going to internalize that and tell myself that being assertive is, is a bad quality. Right? So you can kind of see how that, how that whole thing plays out. Um, but look, when, when we can get to the place where we're interacting with people, whether it's our family, whether it's our work relationships from a place of your truth, from a place of your knowing um, and your confidence, then we start to become less, uh, like less impacted by how we're received. And that is true power. That is living in your power. Um, and look, I mean, the, the time the time is now to stop holding back because of fear of how we'll be received. We got to go after it. I mean, look at the world. Look at the freaking world we're in right now. You know, thank goodness for those who are speaking out. You know, thank goodness for those 
who don't care who is going to say what about them because they're honoring their truth. They're honoring what they see as being helpful. You know, I just, not to get political, but like, let's just look at Fauci, right? Like he's sharing the information and what he thinks is true, regardless of how everybody else might be attacking him or what have you. Hey, Sinetra, <laughs> good to see you. Hey, Ro, good to see you too, all my guests. Um, but yeah, and hey, Shana, good to see you this week. Uh, we're talking about validation. We're talking about over-reliance on um, external input and feedback um, and how that can really keep us playing small. And uh, where was it go? Yeah, I was, so I was talking about, right, like Fauci, right? Like he is speaking his truth because he knows that that is uh, what he feels. Whether you think he's right or wrong, um, and I, I'll just leave that there. Um, the reality is he's not hooked on on what anybody is going to say about him because he knows what he's doing is the right thing. And um, that's what I implore all of you, all of all of my clients, all of my listeners, all of my readers to, you know, to really find your path to confidence, you know, finding your path to saying like, I'm here for a reason and what my perspective is valid and worthy. And I don't need anybody to tell me otherwise. I don't need to be validated. You know, I don't need the pats on the back to, to drive me to do a better job tomorrow. I'm gonna do a better job tomorrow because I wanna do a better job tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and I think, look, and I'm not a psychologist, I don't even, therapist, I'm none of that, right? I'm a coach and somebody who has done my own healing. Um, you know, and so when I think about the years and even the times now that I struggle with um, wanting validation, you know, I have to look at where this came from. You know, and growing up, you know, I was born with a birth defect, cleft lip and palate, and I was, you know, I was made fun of um, and basically made to feel like I was not enough. Like I was not enough the way I was born. And so because I, I was made to feel that way by others, um, I constantly sought approval other ways. So that made me a very devoted student. I wanted to feel smart. If I couldn't be pretty, then I wanted to feel validated by being smart. Um, and on and on, right? Um, and it, as I entered the work world, it's, it stayed with me, you know? Um, feeling like I wasn't as good as this person or I didn't have the looks of that person and how that impacted, well, how do I feel worthy enough to just be me and that being me was okay. Um, and this took years, you know, this took years. Um, and I still walk into rooms and still feel I'm not worthy to be there or I'm not on par. Um, and I have to go inside for my own validation to say, hell yeah, I belong in this room. Yeah, I belong on, belong on this IG Live, having a platform to like, say what I think needs to be said right now. Um, and that's through years of like, years of peeling back the layers and asking myself like, like why is it so important that I feel validated by others? You know, and I think this can also extend into, um, just even when you think about your life path, right? Like. And me, like personally, over the past several years, I've worked on my own spirituality. I never, I really never had any belief system that relied on anybody other than myself. And, you know, for me, my experience, that was a really hard way of going through life, going through life like I can only rely on me. And even on this path of trying to honor what it is I think I, I'm, I'm here to do on, you know, while I'm here on this earth, 
there there are certainly times where I seek validation like is am I on am I doing the right thing you know like gosh please send me a sign that this is what I'm supposed to be doing you know and then that's normal right because we don't know we we, we can't ever know like if the decisions we're making are in our best interest um, so how do we even unhook, you know, how do I even unhook from looking for signs that like I'm, I'm making the right choices, you know, and I have to come back to like, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm doing the best I can with what I have and with what I know. And guess what guys, that's enough. Like that's enough. And whether I end up turning left later or turning right later, or whether I, I look back and say, Oh, maybe that Maybe that wasn't the best thing. That's all okay because it's still getting me to where, where it is I'm going, um, or where I'm meant to be. You know, um, so I think this this idea of um, you know seeking approval and seeking validation, this is a huge unlock. It's a huge unlock, um, especially for you know for everyone I think, but but especially for women um, who. Uh, I think we've, we've been in a submissive kind of environment, you know, it's like, oh, okay, that's what you want. Okay, no, no, like, what do we want? Uh, what do we know is the right thing? And follow that, um, you know, and sometimes we have to trick ourselves in the process, you know, um, and by that I mean, you know, if you're unsure, if you're unsure about if you did the right thing um, or the thing that you feel good about because you got feedback to the contrary, then, you know, I think what you have to do is you have to start doing things like rewarding yourself, rewarding yourself when you do something regardless of the feedback that you get, regardless of if somebody says that was good or bad, uh, regardless of whatever judgment comes, even your own judgment. How do you reward yourself for just doing um, without somebody else validating that that was what you should have done? Um, you know, when I when I took this leap of faith to start my own business, whew, I mean, it was great when other people told me, hey, like, that's awesome. You know, that's so great that you did that. Um, that felt really good. Right. Um, and then there were people that said, Ooh, like, what are you doing? Like, how are you going to like, how are you building your business? Like, what are you going to do? Like, how are you making money? Um, and that didn't feel so great. Um, but either way I knew people's reactions were because of their own, you know, their own baggage, their own projections. Um, so I had to rely on myself. I had to rely on my own validation that, that this was the right thing. Um, over and over and over again. It's a practice. It's a practice to, um, to, to listen to yourself. It's a practice to let other people's thoughts and opinions and judgments roll off your back like a Teflon pan. It's a practice and it won't, you won't always get it right. You know, sometimes people will say something and it'll stick and you might feel, you know, icky and it might feel gross. Uh, but we just have to keep practicing, letting it go and letting it go and letting it go, letting go all of the external and just focus on our internal, our internal motivation, you know? Um, and I think, again, I think if you're wondering, you know, ooh, do I have an over-reliance on validation? Just start to ask yourself what you're motivated by. What motivated you? And then you can start to see what's going on. Where are the patterns? Like, oh, I was motivated to do that because I was really excited or, Gosh, I was motivated because, you know, my boss, you know, gave me this feedback um, or what have you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think 
Yeah, again, I just want to reiterate that I think that we hold ourselves back when we seek approval from others. And um, we can live a lot of our lives that way if we don't stop and really see what's going on. You know, I remember there was a really, really big project that I worked on um, in, in one of my um, jobs. And I mean, I worked really hard for several months and it was a very visible project. And we were in this big room, with a whole bunch of people and the, the head honcho was giving a lot of praise to some individuals that helped put this thing together. And, you know, I was one of the core team members and I was not mentioned. And, oh my God, I was so, I got so emotional in that moment. I was just like, I was devastated. I was devastated that I wasn't getting recognized at that moment in that room. So much so that I had texted my coach at the time and I was like, I, my, I'm like a faucet right now. Like, I'm like so upset and I need to like, I need to stop, um, stop this emotion because I have to like work and be in this environment all day. Um, you know, and I, to be honest, I don't even remember what she said because I then had a conversation with her. But I remember realizing that I was, I was hooked on like this validation from this, this person. And this person was not even somebody that I fully respected. Um, you know, they were in a position of power, basically. Um, and that experience made me realize that like, I felt good about what I did, that I felt like I was a key member and that I was a, a part of the reason why, you know, this event was, was successful. And I just had to keep coming back to that, to like, to my own truth and understanding about myself and that that was good enough. It was more than good enough. Um, and I didn't need anybody else to tell me that I did a great job because I knew it. Um, and, and that's, again, you know, look, it's easy to say, and it's hard to, it's hard to give yourself those messages over and over and over again. But I think that's, you know, that's one of the tools that I use to get to a place where I can be like, I don't give a crap about what you say. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, ah, yeah, this is feisty on Friday, you know, and uh, if you have any questions about anything I talked about, um, by all means, don't be afraid to DM me. Again, this is Tosca with Tosca Coaching and Consulting, and you can find out more about me at toscadimatteo.com. Thank you so much and have a great weekend.